So how did you choose the, how did you choose the bassoon? It's, I'm curious. You probably have some interesting story about that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I the first instrument I played was piano. Uh, it's kind of something my mom kind of made my my sister and I both do, and I basically didn't like the piano, didn't want to practice. I uh, picked up cello for a couple of years. I uh, you know, played in the school orchestra and stuff. Didn't really like cello as much. Maybe liked it a little bit more than piano. So I hated both of them. <laughs> but and then uh, I I came to the bassoon. Uh, Wait a minute, were you like a euphonium virtuoso? Well, that was after. Oh, bassoon, okay. bassoon was my first wind instrument. Okay. Um, so uh, I was looking up in the encyclopedia at home. We had like this world book encyclopedia, um, and well, actually before that, I I heard a recording of the Bach first Brandenburg Concerto. It's the only one that has bassoon on it. And I was really drawn, especially to the sounds of the bassoon and the oboe, these kind of uh, unique double reed winds. So it was, it was an acoustical attraction. Yeah. I mean, when you heard it, you're like, oh. I want that. Yeah, exactly. It really stuck out to me. I really remember I would like stay in the car after we pulled into the garage and like listen to the, this recording. Uh, and then I looked up the oboe and the bassoon in the encyclopedia, and I thought. Uh, the bassoon player, like the picture of the person playing bassoon, they looked like very relaxed, very chill. I thought it was kind of a cool looking instrument. And the uh, the oboist in the picture looked like really red in the face, really just kind of stressed <laughs> out. And uh, so I was like, I told my mom, hey, I'd like to play the bassoon. And she, you know, um, luckily found a private teacher in the area, which can be kind of hard for a, uh, for bassoon. There's not a lot of uh, Teachers certainly not as wide of a range as for piano or violin. And was this in Orange County or Portland? This was in Portland. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then, you know, after that, I started playing bassoon in sixth grade band. And then very quickly I got bored and started venturing on and dabbling in some other instruments. Uh, like the oboe, I actually played oboe for a year in seventh grade. And then eighth grade, I played euphonium for a year. Uh, Any recordings of that? No, not that I know of. But I, you know, I liked. I, I wanted to play an instrument that I could just overpower everyone else. <laughs> yeah, euphonium's good. At, very, very good. At yeah, and I think it's considered to be one of the easier brass instruments to play. I mean, I'm oh, not, boy, not there are really YouTube on. comments. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really yeah. the murky waters here. Look at the buttons, right? What about the oboe? Did that did that help you produce uh, your glorious bassoon tone today? Uh, Tell you what to avoid. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, yeah, that's a good point to look at it. You know, it's funny, this is just a random funny story, but I remember uh, in seventh grade I was playing oboe and bassoon at the same time I was doubling, because in in our uh, middle school band, um, there was no oboist, I was the only, I was, it was just me, um, so I was doubling on both ends, so I would switch off for, on both instruments. Um, like, if, uh, if there was an oboe solo coming up, I would switch to the oboe, and then if the more interesting bassoon part come up. I was switched to bassoon, um, but during one of the concerts, just like in one of the gymnasiums at the school, um, I uh, it was really dumb. So I would just lay the bassoon down on the ground with the vocal and the reed sticking up. Yes. And um, and I would do the same thing with the oboe. I would just put the oboe down with the reed sticking out. And my friend, the uh, uh, French horn player, he accidentally stepped on the reed of the oboe. <laughs> So uh, attempting to play it after that was, was not a pleasant experience. <laughs> it was not so successful. Was that one of your first concerts? Thanks. Uh, yeah, I had a reed problem in my first concert too. That first concert was on half the bassoon reed, because I broke it off on the person next to me. So you know, it's there's uh, there's it's levels of progression. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. My, my you know, what, what, sorry. I also started on the piano. I didn't hate it as much as Keith did. I thought I was going to be a piano player. Um, and then uh, I started the clarinet in sixth grade, and so I kept those going. And I started the bassoon in eighth grade um, because I guess I was not very good at the clarinet. And so, so both about eleven years old then, right? Yeah, no, something like that. I guess I was twelve. Twelve. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think my band director basically was looking for something for me to do to use up energy. Okay. And so she kind of just gave me a bassoon and said, please be quiet. Figure it out. Yeah. 
Yeah. And uh, so I came back from Christmas break, and now I was going to play the bassoon and not the clarinet anymore. And so, uh, and I seemed, to, I think I got more praise with the bassoon, because I got to sit up in the front, special treatment, because I just started, and, you know, all that sort of stuff is right up my alley. Um, and were you the only bassoon player in your band? Yes. That's yeah. Cool. A lot of times that happens. That's pretty common, where there's no bassoon in the band, and then the band director has a piece that they want to bring to some competition, but there's a bassoon part, so they got to convert either the most talented or annoying kid in the <laughs> band and have them play the bassoon and then they can play that piece. Sometimes talent and, and annoying That's true. Is the same. We yeah. learned that in Amadeus. It doesn't have to be or either That's or. true. That's true. Yeah. And I, I had a knack. I think I had a knack. <laughs> um, and so, uh, so after that it was the bassoon. I did a little trumpet marching in high school. So we have a little bit of bra brass background. Wow. So that, that's how that started. And then um, contrabassoon is sort of a happy accident. I don't think anyone who is um, of sound mind dreams of playing the contrabassoon. Um, or if they do, they're probably in prison. Um, Remind us, what is exactly your job title? Bassoon slash contrabassoon. So you're the man. If it's, if there's, if there's, in general? Uh, yeah, in general. If there's a um, contra bassoon part, you, you're Yeah, you're if there's up, contra, the I'm playing that. Yeah, because no one else is going to touch that. And I, they probably have strong contracts to make sure they don't have to touch it. And then um, if there's not, if there's other parts and there's no contra part, then it's between all of us to figure out who wants to play what. It's a very team-oriented section. I really like that. So let's talk about the, the Mozart bassoon concerto, which Keith is performing. Keith, what are the dates of that? January 18th and 20th, 2018. It's freaking exciting. It's so soon. Yeah. I can't believe how soon that's coming out. Yeah, yeah it really is. It's been really fun for me just to see your face everywhere. Like We just did a movie recently at work, and they had the whole movie screen up. And for part of the ads going through, it's like just your face. Yeah. Right. It's like 30 that's foot a... face. <laughs> Keep the... looking. You've already spent incredible hundreds right, and hundreds right. of hours on this piece. Yeah. Right. You're both young guys. So if, over the course of your lives, you'll, you'll continue, you'll be teaching sure. it to other people. Right. I'm sure right. you do that for your students. And everything yeah, right. For sure. How, I mean, it's just, it must be like thousands and thousands of Yeah, hours. constantly talking about the books. Right. Someone now, Someone in our life is always going to be working on that Mozart. Right. Like a student of ours is going to be doing a festival or something. So you know, almost, I'm, so 365 days in a year, you can pretty much bank on 300, one hour of each day. <laughs> one hour a day of thinking <laughs> or teaching or practicing. God, could he not have written a little something better than quarter note, half note for us at the beginning of the Mozart? Just what, what, what you do with I find it difficult to sell. Do you just yeah, do you just revel in it? Is it the most comfortable measure of your no, life? Oh no, it's, it's, I don't think it's comfortable for anyone. I don't think so either. It sounds like a car horn to me, like a really elegant <laughs> classical car horn. Well, I'm sure that Keith's not going to sell. No, yeah, yes, that's why people are going to come. I'll, I'll try it. Have you tried playing it on the contra just for fun? Um, alone. I do a lot of things alone that no one will know, and that's one of them. Did you finish your degree at Curtis? Keith? Uh, no, not technically. I um, I only I only did three years there. No. Do you think you'll f uh, finish it, or do you have any desire to? I think they should just give you an honorary doctorate at this point. Get one for me too. I never went there. Yeah, and yeah. I want one of those hats. This weird the thing. With the... Do you not graduate from anywhere? I did. High school? I did, but I was angry at my school because they shut it down on me. The high school? No, the the undergrad. I was in. I was in the St. Louis Conservatory, which doesn't exist anymore. So I was the last. Um, and you didn't get a square hat of it? Out of it? No, I watched it. I watched my name being called out because I didn't want to shake the the, the president's Whoa. hand. Whoa! You don't have a square hat because you were protesting. Yeah, I was protesting. Wow. I was I was I was one angry. Wow! If you get an honorary doctorate, ask for two, ask for two extra. So no, I'll put a put a yeah. good word for you guys. Yeah, at least for the hat. Yeah, that's all I want. Yeah. I don't even need the cape. I, you know, or the degree. I'll just wear a bathrobe. Yeah. So that works too. Right. Jokes. So, uh, now we come to my favorite part of the interview. We all get to tell a, 
a musical joke regarding our, about our instrument, I guess. Yeah. So who wants to go first? I'll go first. Okay. So uh, why is the bassoon better than the oboe? Because it burns longer. Oh, okay. So does the oboe even burn? I'm know. sure someone's tried. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, that would, it would, might be hard to get, get it started. It's a denser wood. It is wood. very dense. It's a very dense wood. And wave. very rare. Yeah. If it's you threw wave. it into the center of the sun, it would certainly burn. It would, yes. It would disintegrate. I, mean, I don't know if that's happened. Right. Yeah, we, I don't know. We, all right, Miles, your, your joke. I made this up for your interview. Okay. What do a bassoonist and a librarian have in common? Uh, I don't know, Miles. What do bassoonists They both have? enjoy a good read. Oh, that's so uh, sweet. How about them apples? Nice. Not yeah, funny at all. I don't get it. <laughs> all right, here's mine. Okay. A musician and drummer walk into a bar. That's it. <laughs> what? <laughs> get it? I, I get it, yeah. I don't. Uh -huh. Oh, there's a drummer that I'm using. Got it. Ah, got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it.